Alrighty, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna melt the holes for the magnet wire. I used a really hot paper clip for this. And by the way, if you want a parts list, it's towards the end of the video. Now we're gonna thread that magnet wire through the bottom hole of the antenna body, which was 3D printed. And I am gonna make a new design for this. I used scraps that I had at home just to see if it would work. But as you'll see in the parts that I have at the end, I'm also gonna make one possibly for 10 meters out of the parts that I'm gonna buy. So it'll be a legit design that I can publish. Now, do not solder BNC center pins like I did. I put the solder on the wrong side and it kind of touched the center pin and made it really difficult to push through the body of the BNC. I kind of had to go sand it. Now we're gonna set that center pin into the body of the BNC. If you use coax, it's a lot easier because the coax will kind of hold it in place, but I did not do that here. So I pushed it through, and now we're gonna slide the heat shrink into the BNC body, and that just provides an extra layer of protection. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna pull the wire through the body and set the BNC connector into the clip that I've printed into the body to hold it in place. Now, figuring out the inductance of the coil that you need, I used an online calculator. And then I used another calculator based on the diameter of the body to figure out how many turns of wire I would need. Took a little bit of math to figure that out. And I'm, if I get enough requests, I'll show you how to do it um, in another video. But that one's gonna take me a minute to actually get done. Uh, it's a cross between, it, it, basically I'm doing um, some art. I'm really just kind of figuring out with educated guesses what I need for the inductance and how many winds and it all is based on a few variables such as the diameter of your core, the thickness of the wire, how many turns you have. The turn spacing does make a difference. So I try to make mine all crammed together. And if you use smaller wire, you'll have to use lower power, but you might be able to get more winds out of it. So that could also change the inductance. I think that's how Elecraft does it. They use smaller wire. I've never taken one apart of their AX2s to, to actually find out how they make it so small. Next, we're gonna thread that wire through the top. And this was pretty easy. I just bent it into a hook and pushed it through just enough that I could grab it with some needle nose pliers. And I'm gonna grab it and yank it through and make sure that that coil is super tight right there. What I don't show is that once I pull it through, I used a little knife and I scraped the insulation off, the enamel off, so that it will make good contact with the screw that we're gonna pull, push, uh, screw through here in just a minute. So I'm just gonna pull that through. See, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it to make sure that that winding is super tight there. And then I'm gonna bend it back so that the, uh, wire doesn't pull back through. There you go. So now we're gonna insert the whip screw and we're just gonna move this BNC connector out of the way just enough that we can push that screw through. And I, I originally designed it so that even if there are two pieces of wire in there, that screw should slide up and through the body and boom goes the dynamite. I hope that phrase isn't trademarked. I'm sure it is, but I'm not making any money off of this, so I guess I can use it. Now we'll speed it up and here comes the screw. And the thread should go through that uh, winding, but just in case, I'm gonna wind another section around the screw and then trim it. And then when I put the nut 
on the end of the screw, it's going to smush it down and make a pretty doggone good connection. So here's snippy snip. And now we're going to thread the nut on there. This was also difficult, and I'm going to find another way to do this. Again, that's the fun is uh, of these projects is um, trying to find a way that make it repeatable with parts that you can find. That uh, BNC has been in a junk drawer for probably close to 10 years. Now we're going to secure that coil and nut with some Q-Dope. Definitely don't want anything coming loose in the field. The last thing that we're going to do, and you notice that the where the BNC is, it's open. I created a separate 3D printed piece that can go over that. And I just glued it in place. The bottom tube tab, glued in place. Boom. Last thing, we got to make a counterpoise. A 77 inch counterpoise was perfect for this antenna. And you'll see on the analyzing portion right here that when I analyzed it, it had an excellent SWR. So really the next thing I need to do is take this thing out and actually see if it will poda or parks on the air. Will, will it work? Can I make a contact with it? Now, I already shot a video for that, but I, that was before I made a trimmed counterpoise. So here we go. Here are the parts that you're gonna need. You need, of course, the whip. You'll need some enameled wire. You'll need a BNC connector. I think that one's gonna be better. And then you need a three millimeter screw and a three millimeter nut or two. Alrighty, so tune back next week and we'll find out, will it pota? And here are the credits.